In today's video, we're going to create an interactive flat transition in PowerPoint that we can use to navigate between slides during our presentations. Let's get it started. So for today's video, we are going to use the same flat transition we created in our previous flat transition tutorial. If you haven't seen it yet, here it is. Please take a minute to see it so you don't get confused on this one. That being said, as you probably remember, our previous flat transition was created to help us move from one slide to another in a simple yet elegant way. So here we are in the first slide of our presentation, and if I click anywhere on the screen, the transition activates and the second slide shows up. So what are we gonna do differently now? Well, we have added this small icon here that we are gonna use to add some interactive behavior to our flat transition. Basically, what we want is to add an interactive menu to our custom transition that only shows up if we click on this icon. Otherwise, we want the original flat transition to show up. So let's do it. First, we need to make a couple changes here. Let me zoom out a little bit, go to animations and open the animation pane. Now we're gonna remove these animations we added last time. These are fading animations for our blue rectangles, the logo and a spin animation for the logo as well. So let's get rid of them. And now we're gonna rotate the logo to its vertical position. Now let's create our menu. Here I have an additional slide for that purpose. So let's go to insert, shape, and we're gonna use a partial circle. Okay, let's make it a little bigger. Let me zoom in. And now we're gonna move this orange bubble to this position to create a quarter circle. Now let's copy and paste. Let's make them match. And now we are gonna use the orange bubbles once again to create two slices of a circle. Okay, awesome. Now let's do the same with this one. Okay. Select these two slices, right click, group, copy and paste, and let's use this to create a half circle. Again, let's select everything, copy and paste, and use the second half to create a full circle. Perfect! Group everything once again, and let's change the outline color. Oops. I think I didn't group this properly. Let me fix it. Okay, let's try again. Done. Now we need to change the color of our circle. And let's change the outline weight to this one. Next, we are going to add some icons to our circle. So go to Insert, Icons, and select 8 icons that match the subject of your presentation. I will do a random selection here, but remember, I'm just giving you the idea. The final design is totally yours. So this one is fine. This one. This one. And this one. Click on insert. And now let's take one of the icons and place it inside our desired slice in the circle. I recommend you to do this in an order that makes sense for you so you don't get lost during the presentation. Let's see, I think 0.5 is a good size for the icons. So let's select all of them and change the size here. Now let's continue placing the icons. And now we're gonna change their color to a brighter one. Probably this one is okay. Next, let's select everything. Right click, group. Okay. 
Let's also add a shadow to our menu. And since this is an interactive menu that we are going to use for navigation, we need to add some links, right? So to do that, right click on the icon, link, insert link, and on this dialog box, go to place in this document and click on the slide you want the link to point to. So slide one, slide two, Slide 3, 4, five, six, And I will need to add a couple more slides here, so let me do it. Seven, and eight. Now let's cut our menu and go back to the first slide. I'm gonna paste it here. And now we're going to copy the elements we are using for our custom transition. Let's paste them here and we need to do a couple adjustments. Let's start by deleting these line animations we have here as they are making our elements move outside the slide. And in this case, we want the exact opposite. So let's get rid of them. And now let's add a fading animation to our logo. Change the start to with previews and move the animation over here. Next, click on the first blue rectangle. Go to more entrance effects and click on stretch. Hit OK. Change the start to with previews and let's go to the effect options to change the direction to from top. Hit OK. Click on the rectangle and now we're going to use the animation painter to assign the exact same animation to our second blue rectangle. But in this case, we're going to open the effect options and change the direction to from bottom. Now let's move these two animations over here. Next, we're going to work with our menu. Right click on it, bring to front. Let's move it over here. Okay, we need to bring this to front first, and so let's see. Okay, now right click on the menu, size and position. Change the rotation to 45 degrees, and let's add a spin animation to our menu. Go to effect options, change the amount to 45 degrees, and the rotation to counterclockwise. Change the start to with previews and the duration to 0.6. We still need to add one more animation here, and that is a fading animation. Change the start to with previews and move the animation before the spin animation. Now look at this. Select all the animations, go to trigger, on click off, and select the element you have created as your menu button. In my case, it's an icon I have named Trigger. What icon am I talking about? This one. Remember that you can also go to Home, Select, Selection Pane, and here you will find the name of your Trigger icon. In case you don't know how to assign a custom name to an element inside PowerPoint, just double-click on it and enter your desired name. 
Okay, let me hit Ctrl Z. And let's open this slideshow. So here we are in the first slide, and now I have two options. I can go straight to the second slide without showing the menu by clicking anywhere on the screen. My custom transition shows up, and there you go. But what happens if I want to open the menu? Well, in that case, I will click on my trigger icon here, and the menu is displayed. Now let's suppose that I want to go to the second slide. So I click on the corresponding icon and voila! Now what happens if I have several slides inside my presentation? Will it be too hard to add the custom transition and menu to all of them? Not at all. Look at this. Duplicate the next slide you need to assign the custom transition to. Now go to the new slide created and group everything. Assign the proper name to the group. Now go to the next slide in the sequence and copy everything. Go back to the duplicate and paste it here. Group the elements you just pasted and make sure they are properly aligned. Assign a meaningful name and now copy the transition elements. Next, you will need to add appear and disappear animation to the pieces of content you pasted on the duplicated slide. In this case, slide 2 will disappear and slide 3 will show up. This is better explained in the flat transition tutorial I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Here it is again in case you want to watch it. Now we need to change the start of these animations to with previews and move them after the yellow small rectangle disappear animation. Why? Because in that way our audience will not notice the mess behind our custom transition. From their point of view we just move from one slide to the next one smoothly and that's exactly what we want. Now to add our custom menu, let's go to the next slide in the presentation, in this case, slide 3, and let's copy the menu elements we just used on our first slide. Let's paste them here, and remember, you have a small yellow rectangle under the menu that you need to copy as well, so copy it, move the menu to its position, and paste the element here. Now just bring the rest of the elements to the front, minus the two blue rectangles. Let's see if we did it right. Yep, we are just missing the trigger now, so let's move this and let me show you something that happens sometimes with PowerPoint. Here is my trigger icon, but if I open the selection pane to find the name I assigned to it, in some cases it doesn't show up on the selection pane. When this happens, just add any animation to the element, go to the animation pane and here you will have the name displayed. Let's delete this animation. Move the blue rectangle to its original position. Select all the animations. Click on trigger, on click off, your desired element. Time to try this out. If I click on my trigger, there you go. Now let's suppose that I want to go back to the second slide. All I need to do is to click on the corresponding icon and it works perfectly. Now, what happens if I want to go straight to my third slide without showing the menu? I just need to click anywhere on the screen and the transition happens without showing the custom menu. So, I hope you have found this useful. By now, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever I submit a new video. Take care and see you next time.